All right, go to sheet four. This is about using these options, the center line or center mark and center lines. Okay, let's start with the center line. On the hitch magnet, we have a hole drilled through the middle of it. So we need to line up, show a line indicating the center. So do you see how the green dot lines up? That's at the center. I'm gonna click on the top one, click on the bottom one where it's green and then drag that out a little bit. And I'm gonna hit escape because I wanna stretch that line out. So I press escape and I grab the end and I'm gonna drag it up a little bit until it separates and drag this down until it separates. This uh, line that crosses over the part and has dashes on it, this indicates the center axis of this part. And this, we're only going, going to apply this to places where holes are drilled. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is use the center mark tool. I'm going to click on that. I click on the center and I drag out. I want to have these lines that are made extend beyond the sides of the part. So I'm going to drag them out just a little bit so that it's easy to see that there's a center mark here. Uh, if it's inside a part, just make sure they overlap the edges of the hole. And if it's uh, more convenient to go overlap like that, then that's fine too. And uh, there's really, there are some rules I'm sure out there somewhere about how long those should be. But that's enough for now. So uh, this is an example of how to do that. You'll have a lot of these on sheet two. And we'll just put some of these on here. Let's zoom in on this one. I know this one's problematic. So we'll choose the center of this hole using the center mark tool. And then you see how that terminates right on the circle. So we do need to press escape and stretch that out a little bit so that it overlaps the edges. So you just grab that little dot there. And why is it not behaving? Don't know why. Let's see, maybe if I drag out a little more. Oh, it's huge. So drag them out. Drag these out until they cross over the edges of the part, I guess. Okay, so now we've got a good center line there. Okay, so that shows the center. Um, you On these, it's a little easier because these are much smaller. So all you have to do is click on the center and it'll put that in place for you. So everywhere there's a hole that is drilled, you need to use the center line. Okay, and you get the idea on that. So don't skip any of them. Only if it's a hole. Like this, you're going to describe with a radius. So any circles, be sure you're describing with the radius or a diameter. The next thing we need to talk about is measurement precision. If you remember, you have access to these specifications uh, I gave you at the start of this project. So you can see all of the measurements that you were supposed to use in developing your train. So... When you model these things, or when you are doing this drawing, you need to pay attention to the number of digits that these measurements are, because that's one of the things we'll be checking. So we're going to go through and do some annotation uh, on this screw so that you can see uh, how to do this. So uh, we will focus on things that are visible in the projected or the orthographic views uh, some of the things are not going to be easy to do without uh, breaking rules about how to dimension so looking at this screw you can see that everything here looks like it's two decimal places or three decimal places so in my example I'm going to show some that have more than those and we'll go from there okay so on this uh, so we're going to go in and do some annotation on this screw uh, and this is the modified one so it's a little bit different than what you drew from the spec but just measure it as it is. So this is not enough decimal places so you can see how to change that and I'm just going to randomly set some stuff here. I can see the number it is it actually has a whole lot of decimal places and I'm going to go to four on this one just because I can just because I'm just doing an example for you. So when I click on that, now I have that dimension there set very specifically. Again, we would go from here to the bottom of the top part. And let's go to three on that one. 
and then I can go from the bottom edge. Remember when you're doing these dimensions, go from the one edge to the top edge. So I'm going to go to three on this one just to make it make sense. And then I'm going to go all the way to the top. Notice how I'm not choosing the green dots. I'm choosing the lines and that way my extension lines don't cross over the part. And for that one, we can stick with one inch because it's exactly one inch. Let's make it smaller. So if I wanted to go to 1.1 then or 1.0, it would look like that. So now I have some dimensions here. Another thing that we need to dimension is this radius on the outside. Uh, it's going to say SR on yours, and that's fine. So I'm going to add this dimension. Notice it goes a long way. So I'm going to make that for the purposes of this example. Let's make it five digits or four digits so the thing is you'll want to match the precision that's presented to you even if the numbers don't match you need to match the precision presented to you in that document uh, another thing we need to dimension is this let's see if this works how do we um, so i'm going to pause right now figure another thing to keep in mind is this part is threaded so i'm going to use the hole and thread tool here to identify this dimension so I'm just going to click on that outer edge drag it out and it tells me that it's a quarter inch uh, 20 UNC 1A screw and that's fine another thing we need to use is the chamfer tool and if I remember right you click on let's zoom in you click on this and then this and it tells you the chamfer right there okay so again match the precision of the numbers even if it's not the same as the specification if you're using the default parts instead of the ones you made uh, you'll follow that uh, another dimension you need to show on this one is going to be the size right here and I know in the drawing it says uh, so many 30 seconds and so we're going to change that to let's go all the way to five decimal places on that keep in mind when you're doing these uh, every if you're turning in a drawing here every time you go up it increases the cost to manufacture that because the higher the precision the more expensive it is to machine all right I'm gonna pause for a moment and see what else that's strange Let's take a look at the wheel. I'm going to have several measurements associated with this projection. So I think what I'm going to do is drag this over so I have some room on the left side. I'm going to reposition this back in the lower left. And I'm going to move this section B on this side because I'm not going to be doing any measurements there. Uh, one of the things that's going to be convenient to show is right here if we dimension from this side to this side and pull across like this that's going to be better again and this looks like it would be a three digit number and let's zoom out so let's drag this away from it a little bit so i'm going to hit escape and drag it up a little bit so now we know the thickness of that piece let's go back to dimension and add some dimensions from here to say zoom in on that to the top edge here and that looks good for now we're going to dimension from here to here and from here to the very top i don't want the green dots i want the line edges if i can get them and I'm getting too far out. Okay. All right. Uh, this 0.38 looks a little strange. So let's make sure we've got the appropriate number of places there. So those are some good, useful things to have right there. Uh, the other things we want to talk about are going to be uh, these here. So let's do... Well, you know how to do radius and um, diameter and that sort of thing. You'll also want to kind of zoom in and talk about the, I guess we could do a hole. We might be able to do a hole here. So we're going to get that feature and talk about that hole in that. And this feature, talk about that hole. 
And then another thing you have to do is measure some angles. So we're going to measure angles between here and here. Drag that out like that. And that looks good. And then we're going to drag, we're going to talk about the angle from here to here. Okay, and this is the stock part. You will be using your custom stuff here. So there's a couple of those. You'll have to do all of the dimensions. I'm just giving you some examples. On the cow catcher view, there are a couple of thicknesses you need to uh, identify clearly. On the view that we added here, we need to show the thickness of this offset by clicking this and this and dragging out. And then be sure you set your precision appropriately. Okay. And you may have to move some things around so that you don't have any overlap. So we could drag this over to this side and that makes it nicer. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay. Um, another thing you have to show is the thickness of this piece here, the shell thickness. So we're going to dimension this and this and pull up. Again, I want to show three decimal places on this. Or anyway, match your precision to your specifications and you'll be all right. Because what I'll be looking for is the precision that you went to. So that's a couple of sticky measurements you'll have to get. Everything else is pretty typical. So you'll just show the dimensions across the top and uh, that sort of thing. So that should be okay. You'll need to include a lot of dimensions on this page. One final thing we need to talk about is annotating the exploded view so that we know which parts are which. So I'm going to kind of zoom in on this and we're going to add some balloons that show what item it is and what it looks like on here. So I'm just going to go kind of around this way and put balloons on everything uh, that is exploded. Okay. So what we do is choose balloon and zoom in on the part that you want to add the balloon to. Wherever you click is going to be where the arrow attaches. So right here I want to attach this. So I left click one time, left click a second time to place the number, the little balloon, and then right click and continue. So that's going to put a label there for part number four. And you just work your way around like this. So here's the train body. Clicking and be sure and hit right click and continue when you've got it. And one other thing I want to show you on this. Let me do a couple of more of these. So right here we have a part. I want to show a balloon here. Right click and continue. I'm going to click on the outside of this peg. Go out here. Left click and then right click to continue. So we're just going to go all the way around like that. Another thing that kind of clutters this image up, you see how we've got these little lines everywhere? We're going to double click on this view. I'll press escape, double click on the view. And over here where it says display options, no nope. comments. Ah, comments. Components, show trails. We're going to turn that off. Click OK. And what that does is it takes out the lines to make give us a cleaner drawing. So. Uh, in this case, you need to go around and make sure everything is labeled, not overlapping anything. You'll have all nine parts identified. Uh, you don't have to do every one of the, um, like for instance, the wheels. There are four of those. There's, you only need to do one of them because we can see that if we see this one, we know what they all look like. And when you look at this, it should they should be kind of evenly spaced around here you shouldn't have like one of these like way over here um you know don't have like this one like drug way over here they all kind of need to be in the same space avoid overlapping and jumping across the drawing like that keep them where the arrow goes straight to the part and there's nothing in between that and the balloon so if you don't have spacing between these parts you won't be able to do that very nicely so that's adding the balloon annotation to your exploded view.
One more thing will be to add text that applies to draw the drawing to bring out details uh, about how the parts are constructed. For So to add text to this, you're going to choose the text option in Annotate, and then you draw your box where you want it. And then it's going to give you this weird little screen. And you can put your note in there. So for instance, we have a note that says all holes are drilled with point angles. And uh, let's look at some of the controls on this. If we click OK, uh, we can see that that's pretty small. And I'm going to escape from that. Now if I double click on that, I can open it and edit that. This is a little different than a tech, most text editors because you're actually setting these sizes in inches. So you have some common sizes here. Let's say if we wanted to make this 0.1 instead of 0.12. Uh, you would change that right there. Uh, keep in mind you have to have all of this selected in order for it to work. Don't change it from Tahoma. That is a gothic uh, font and that's what we want to use. So I'm going to just change this for the sake of demonstration to a 0.1 inch font and or 0.1 inch size and then we put that in there. So now we've got some annotation on here talking about uh, the holes and how they're to be drilled. After further consideration on page six of the two pegs here, and you may have to do this to the other pegs, let's go ahead and add a bottom view. So we're going to do place views. We're going to do projected from the bottom, and that's going to let us go ahead and get the diameters from the bottom and the radiuses from the bottom. And let's do the same thing for this little guy too, projected from this to the bottom and create those views and that's going to let us get because this one has uh, if you you depending on which video you watched it may have a taper on it so we're seeing the bottom and then we're seeing the chamfer and then we see that it tapers toward the top uh, it depends again on how this was constructed in the videos that you watched so that gives us a place to get those We'll go ahead and do that on the hitch peg as well. So we'll choose the view, do projected, go down here and create that. So now we've got uh, the top, the side and the bottom view and that's going to let you go in and give good dimensions on all of this. So that's the final change. So this has been an overview of some of the special things you'll have to do to the drawing as you go through and complete it.